Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today we're playing some more Yorn, God of Winter, and Cauldron the Rhyme Staff. Looking at our opening hand, we do have two lands and a land search, so I think we're pretty good there. Get down, Commander, have mana for Beast Within, go from there. Uh, got some new cards, Pull from Tomorrow is in the deck, let's go ahead and keep. We are not going first, sad face. So our commander is two green for Legendary 3-3, Legendary Snow Creature God. Whenever it attacks, we untap each snow permanent we control. And Cauldron the Rhyme Staff is one blue-black for a Legendary Snow Artifact that has tap. You may play Target Snow Permanent from your graveyard this turn. If you do, it enters the battlefield tapped. So I don't think it's a terribly overpowered commander at all, so I kind of like it for that. Also looks like we're going last based on the cards being played. Card is Kabir Plateau, and our first opponent is Runetail Ketsune Ascendant. Man, I haven't seen cards like this in 50 years. Anyway, two white for a Legendary 2-2. Well, if you have 30 or more life, you flip it, and because we're playing Commander, it immediately flips into Runetail, Katsuni's Essen Ascendant's Essence. That's a mouthful. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to creatures you control, so we're not getting through on combat damage. We have a Mana Confluence into a Burgeoning for Ramos Dragon Engine. Six for a Legendary 4-4, Artifact Creature Dragon. Flying, whenever you cast a spell, put one one counter on this card for each of that spell's colors, and remove five counters from Ramos. Add white, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, green to your mana pool. Activate this ability only once each turn. I do rather like this design. It's a five color commander that isn't completely and stupidly broken. You can do combos with it, but most of the time it's just like charms and split cards and stuff like that, and I really enjoy that in five color. We have a Plains into play over for our last opponent, and then we have a Maze's End into play for Ramos. That is got to get Beast within pretty quick. So our last opponent is Arcades the Strategist. Actually, I was just building one of these in paper. Finally getting around to it. It's only been two and a half years or something. One green, white, blue for Legendary 3-5 Elder Dragon. Flying in Vigilance. Whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Each player you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Really like this card, although a lot of the decks are the same and I got my own twist on it. Let's see what they do with theirs though. Our turn gives us a snow covered island. Nice, all three colors. Let's go ahead and play the pathway and we'll pass it off to our opponents. Burgeoning will trigger, of course. We have a watery grave into play, it tapped. Ramos ramping out. I wonder if it's kind of going to be like a five color landfall deck. Doesn't make too much sense to me with Ramos, but. Let's wait and see. I've seen some good hybrid decks before. Over to Runetail. Katsune Ascendant. We have another comes into play tap spell dual faced land thingy bob. This one is. Oops, that's the plateau. Undo Sky Ruins. Okay. Hey, it's better that they have the lands than not, right? So, two Ramos' turn. Urbog Tomb of Yogmoth came into play off their burgeoning trigger that last time. Err. Uh, Maze's End is being activated. Okay, search your library for gate card, put it on the battlefield and shut your library. If you control 10 or more gates at that point, you win the game. The uh, maze's end goes back to their hand and they play it for turn. Over to Arcades. Now, one of the things I really like about this card is it makes Bant like very aggro, but like in the weirdest way. So, I don't know. It tickled my fancy way back when it came out. We had a forest come into play. Burgeoning did not put another land from Ramos' hand into play, so that's pretty good. Ooh, Sunscape Familiar. Yeah, that'll be good for him. Reduces Arcades cost down to just its colors. To our turn, we get Mythos of Brokos. Okay, that's not terrible. I don't know how we're going to outrace Ramos, though. We need to get rid of that Maze's End. So, probably turn three, we're actually going to play a Beast Within. Alright, let's play that Farseek. Go get a technical non-forest. Let's see, we do have some double costs in the deck, usually on the green side, so I definitely want it to be green. 
Oh, well, here we go. We could just get the Triumph, too. That'll cover all of our bases, so let's go ahead and do that. And we'll pass the turn. Over to Runetail's turn. Planes into play. Still nothing out of the MS player for the land, so that's good. Resplendent Angel. So it's a life gain deck. I wonder if they have... Was it Angel of Destiny? Where it hits people and they gain life equal to the damage, you and that player. But then they can lose the game if a certain condition is met. I don't remember specifically what it is at the moment. Maze's End being activated again. And the problem with Maze's End is it can be recurred and they aren't five color. So destroying it may buy us a little bit of time, but it may not buy us enough time. Expedition map coming down. Get some any land from their deck. Uh-oh. Arcady's turn. Full art island into play. Really keeping up with those full arts. All right. I've noticed something like on Magic Online now. I can't select what lands I want to put into a deck. And for me, selecting the art for the lands was definitely a thing. Uh, it doesn't hurt my gameplay, but I like to customize. Arcades, the strategy is coming down for that player. We have a Sunscape Familiar on the attack with its butt off into Ramos. Yeah, I, <laughs> I figure Ramos is going to be a major target right now. Damage is good there, down to 35 on Ramos' side. Arcades ending the turn, going to roll back over to us. We get a Frost Marsh. I mean, we might as well play it. Comes with a play tapped, but we have no one drops that we need to worry about, so no issues there. And then let's go ahead and blow up their land. Because we don't need none of that shenanigans. There's a beast within in the maze's end. Beware. And we'll pass it off. Runetail's turn. Planes into play. Six cards in hand, by the way. Hand still pretty full. Their commander is coming down. It will immediately flip over. All right, just to review, it flips to Rune Tail, Ketsune, Ascendance, Essence. Prevent all damage that will be built, uh, dealt to creatures you control. So that means they can attack with impunity, and Lifelink is just going to be fantastic for them. Ooh, they did not attack anyone. That's interesting. Ramos' turn. Let's see what vengeance it will incur upon us. Yep, it's Eternal Witness. <laughs> I told you they'd get it back. They always... If you're using Maze's End, you're just getting it back. I mean, unless you're Golos, then you can just also tutor it, but... Uh, well, we tried. We're gonna have to leave it up to our opponents, I suppose. We don't have anything that we can really get back Beast Within with just at the moment. Expedition map gets the crack. To another gate, I would surmise. They get a Field of the Dead. Okay, so extra defenses. That's not the best. Ooh, Ramos did not attack. No revenge. That's fine. Gonna sit behind their defenses, I guess. And just play it out till Maze's End. Uh, I don't know if we have any more land destruction besides a Ghost Quarter. Maze's End into play off a Burgeoning Trigger. They get a zombie. Glacial Wall. I love the art on it. I do also wish, though, it had some other ability, but... I mean, it's a Wall of Ice. What are you going to do? Vine Creeper also coming down. I wonder if they have the uh, Axe Bane Guardian kind of combos in there. Could be something they could do. I mean, you don't have, uh, what is it, Vent Sentinel? But there's plenty of other stuff you can do with infinite mana. Blinking, for instance, is something I'm going to run in my deck. We have our Katie's off into Ramos. I can applaud these efforts. Damage is good. Three commander down to 32 for Ramos. Comes our turn. We get a Frost Augur. That might be something that could save us. Let's go ahead and play a Snow-Covered Island. Uh, do we want to get down our commander, though? That's the question. I mean, we don't really have anywhere we can attack with Yorn. So, probably not. We also have a land coming to play off burgeoning. It's a tropical island. Ramos gets a zombie. So at this rate, I figure we'll try to defend ourselves and use Rhyme Staff probably more than not. Maybe launch a, Brothos of Mi or a Mythos of Brokos next turn to uh, get something out of our deck. Might be good. So we summoned Frost Augur and the Hailstorm Valkyrie. We'll pass it off. At least we have some defenders up. The Frost Augur being a lot like Scrying Sheets will help us get through our deck a little bit. So we'll probably be using that one extensively. I do hope we get into some of our card draw soon because we kind of need it. Could also do a pull from tomorrow for like two cards, three cards, but it's not the best. We could get Yorn down and then go for it and pump a bunch of extra mana into it. That might be a plan. So we'll have to wait and see there. We have Crush Contraman, 
Burgeoning is getting exiled. Nice. We have an attack of Katsune Ascendant. Off into Ramos with the Resplendent Angel. Uh, hopefully next turn we can attack, as long as we don't have anything extra to do. I think it's still early enough we can still get down Yorn and not have to worry about, like, a Maze's End win. But we're going to have to see. Damage is good. Ramos down to 29. Katsune Ascendant still at 40. Arcadie's still at 40. We're at 40. Ramos, like I said, 29. Four cards in hand after the draw. Hopefully not drawing too much extra right now. Ramos, Dragon Engine coming down. That'll be pretty good against all the other flyers that are hanging around here. Uh, we could bounce it with Simic Charm and leave an opening for the Angel. Exploration, they may play an additional land on each of their turns. Ramos will get a 1-1 counter. No attack tower, Ramos. Seems legit. Off to Arcades. Suspicious Bookcase. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Alright, well there you go. Plus, I love that card. <laughs> Suspicious Bookcase. That's... I don't know. It's just very entertaining to me. I wonder if they have the uh, the drawbridge that gives haste. What is that one? That could be interesting. So I think with the other two players focused on Ramos, we need to start preparing for the eventual onslaught of Arcades' butt defenders. And Kitsune still has five cards in hand. I don't know what they're playing at besides light gain. So I think at this point we should maybe start winding up to deal with our other opponents. We have a far seek out of Arcades. Two, a technical non farced. It's a Savannah into play tapped. Followed by Stimic Signet. Okay, so a little bit of ramping for Arcades. Now, I don't remember there being any like super big walls that do anything cool. At this point, this is where I would be playing some blink effects like Rune, Deadeye Navigator, maybe even have uh, Restoration Angel or the new Glorious Protector, just in case there's a board wipe. No attacks out of Arcades. Yeah, it didn't really look like they wanted to go anywhere. The uh, Suspicious Bookcase cannot tap yet. Comes to our turn, we get Dead of Winter. Hmm. Is that something we want to do? No, let's keep Dead of Winter for now. Uh, let's go ahead and summon our commander. We will cast Yorn, God of Winter. And probably just pass it off. We do have mana up for a Simic Charm in case we get threatened with anything. If not, we can always do Frost Augur. So let's go ahead and do that. Do Kitsune Ascendant's turn. We have Shefet Dunes. Okay, pay one life, add white. So I never really got the pay one life to get the color, but eh. Protector of the Crown, they become the Monarch. Protector of the Crown is a good card. I do wish it was a little bit beefier, like a 3-5 maybe, or a 2-6, but it gets the job done. Not going to complain too much there. Now, as far as white card draw goes, I think Monarch should be a white-centric mechanic. They're the ones that are really going to care about, like, an organized government. And then, you know, splash it in the other colors too, because, I mean, really, something's going to have, like, an alpha in the pack in green. Red's going to have maybe a tyrant or a respected elder. Black's going to have somebody who wants power, and Blue's going to have, like, you know, the Headmaster Scholar. But I think Monarch should be, like, a slightly white-centric mechanic. That's just me. You can let me know what you think about Monarch in the comments if you want. I like the mechanic myself. Two, the Ramos' turn. Lots of mana being tapped down. Hopefully it's not, like, Casualties of War or Gaze of Granite or something. Looking at a double black, double green here, so... I could be Villainous Wealth. That would also be terrible. Diabolic Revelation. Search your library for up to X cards. Put them into your hand and shuffle your library. We don't get to know what they are. I assume they're going to be gates and or a board wipe. Okay, do we want to respond to that? Uh, we don't have anything to respond with, so... No, no we don't. Because they used up all their mag for the Diabolic Revelation, we do have another turn to wait for on Ramos. But now I'm a little bit concerned that Ramos will be able to knock off five counters on the next Ramos turn and get ten mana. And that doesn't sit too well with me, but the timing's also not working out in my favor. I think next turn we're still probably just going to do Yorn. If he dies in combat, that's fine. We need a pull from tomorrow to refill our hand, and we'll go from there. Whatever we discard, we can get back with the Mythos of Brokos, so I'm not too worried about that. Oh, we have Vesuva, okay. So this will copy, yeah, Field of the Dead. So, it, it might also put us on a faster track to Dead of Winter, too. Mm, that's not the best. 
living up to the channel name, this game, everybody dirtling. Okay, over to Arcady. Suspicious Bookcase is available to make one of the creatures unblockable, and they do have a potential 7 damage out of the Glacial Wall. We will have to wait and see what they do. They also have potentially a Cyclonic Rift in their hand. I haven't seen a Cyclonic Rift in a long time, but you always have to worry about it. We have Arcades on the attack. He's going to take the bookshelf kind of action. It's off into the Ramos player, so it will become unblockable. I am somewhat interested in the decision they made to use Arcades over the Glacial Wall. So, I mean, it is commander damage, so even if Ramos gains life, it sticks there. But I still don't particularly know why. Damage is good. Ramos down to 26, up to 6 commander. All of it from Arcades so far. Comes our turn, we get Profane Command. Another new addition to the deck is Sorcery, though. So, not as strong as something I pull from tomorrow. So, target player loses X life. We can recur something for X. Target creature gets minus X, minus X. And up to X target creatures gain fear. I like this card. I don't know that I like it in this deck. Still testing this one out. It's actually like the second time I've drawn it since testing and recording. So, don't know. But, let's go ahead and attack somewhere with Jorn and get down that pull from tomorrow. Uh, who do we want to attack? I don't really want to die. So, probably going to attack into the Ketsune player. Just so we can uh, do things here. Tap our lands in response to the Yorn trigger. And then we'll go ahead and tap one more mana. And cast Pull from Tomorrow. X will be four. And then we'll have to discard a card. Not a big deal. Alright, Rhyme Feather out could be good. Three visits, Evolution Charm. Uh, what do we want to discard? We didn't really get any permanents besides Narfi, and it does come back on its own, so we're probably going to do Narfi. There we go. And the attack's still going off at the Ketsune Ascendant. Let's see what happens here. They could block. I hope they block with the 2-5 so nothing really happens to us because we're all frenemies here. Uh, but they could kill Yorn. Yeah, they're just going to kill him. That's a sad face. We could do the Simic Charm, but then we don't have anything to take care of Ramos if it comes to our face besides blocking with a Hailstorm, so... Uh, I guess that's what we're going to be doing then. Alright, Yorn becomes a Mighty 6-6. Six, six. They respond to Angel, it will die in combat. I didn't want to do it, but I also don't want to have to resummon Yorn, especially when we don't seem to be drawing any lands, which is unfortunate. At least we have three visits and Evolution Charm to go get some more. I just don't know if we're going to be able to be fast enough to race Ramos. Over to Runetail Ketsune Ascendant's turn. I just like to say it. Let's see what they do. Six cards in hand after the draw step. They still have Monarch. Uh, too bad we didn't hit. We would have had Monarch, but... Oh well, that's not what we were going for anyway. We got some new cards out of it. Rhyme for the Owl is one I haven't been able to use yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Atherflux Reservoir. Haha. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to say about that. Well then, I suppose. Uh, we do not have currently removal for it. We can tutor out a Mythos of Brokos, though. Weathered Wayfarer coming down for the Ketsumi player. They'll gain one life. To Ramos' turn. Let's see. They have six cards in hand after the draw. A bit anxious about that. I was just considering Dev Winter on our next turn here. Um, After an attack, anyway. That way we can use three visits and evolution charm to get some lands, get a land into play, play a land, untap the snow permanent, get down dead of winter, uh, and then next turn maybe mythos. Um, but it really depends on what happens on Ramos' turn, I think. Arcades would get the glacial wall still. Torment of Hailfire. Seven. Okay. Yeah, I don't like using that card in particular. I did use it in your lock in that video series if you want to go check that out. But it also had like a discarding and punishing theme. Torment of Hailfire isn't my favorite just because it takes so long to resolve all the things on Magic Online. In paper, it's not as bad. Because then you can just shortcut, you know? Unfortunately, we can't sacrifice lands. Not that we necessarily want to anyway. Let's go ahead and sacrifice the Frost Augur. Discard the Profane Command. Discard the Rhyme Feather Owl. I think at this point, we're just going to start taking three life. We only did three so far. And I don't want to take an extra 7 from Ramos, especially since it's commander damage. So we'll just lose 3 life times 4. 
All right, our torment is over. We are down to 28. Katsune down to 27. Arcadia's down to 31. Uh, they did sacrifice a wall, looks like. Yeah, the Gate Creeper Vine. Discard a bunch of stuff. Sacrifice the Signet, too. Emeria's Call, Fell the Mighty. Those were both removed from the hand of the Katsune player. Uh, doesn't look like they sacrificed anything else, so they took a lot of life loss. They do have other Flux Reservoir and creatures that have lifelinks, so not as high as a cost to them. Ramos, no attacks. Very dirtily game. Over to Arcades. Okay, so... I don't know, Dead of Winter still might be on the table at this point. We have a Cultivate out of Arcades, more lands for them. Looks like that's it for Arcades. Going to roll over to our turn. Dead of Winter, I'm still flipping coins on it in my head. Ramos has five cards in hand. Our other two opponents have three each. Oh, we drew Gaze of Granite. That's a new one, too. Um, problem being, using Dead of Winter kind of puts Ramos ahead. So I think what we're going to do here is still go get the lands out of our deck with three visits and the Evolution Charm. Attack with Yorn. Again, it will probably die. And then we will untap our lands, get that mana back. Second main phase, Mythos of Brokos, get something out of our deck. Seems like a plan. Woodland Chasm into play. Let's go ahead and get a Evolution Charm going here. Search our library for a basic land card. Let's get a forest. Play that land for the turn. And go to attacks. And let's see, where do we want to attack? Let's go ahead and attack in a Ramos, because I'm pretty sure our guy's going to die anyway. Yorn will trigger. Uh, tapping man now won't really do anything for us. I mean, we could pump the Valkyrie, but won't do anything. We have a beast on the block. Yep, that'll work. Yorn is down. Let's leave it in the graveyard. And Gaze of Granite for one would get rid of the Weathered Wayfarer. That could be good, but I think let's go ahead and do the Brogos thing. Mythos of Brokos. We get to search our library for something and shove it into the graveyard. Then we get two things back from our graveyard to our hand. They have to be permanents, though. You can't search for anything, but you get back two permanents. We really need some card draw, so I'm really wanting to get, like, Mystic Remora. Problem being, we have a lot of creatures in the decks coming out from our opponents, so I don't know that'll be that effective. So let's get Underworld Connections. That'll be a little bit better, and then we can uh, enchant one of our lands and tap it with Yorn. Two cards to our hand. Let's go ahead and pass it off. We have our Commander back and Underworld Connections. So with Yorn, when we attack, it can untap the land that we have. And then we can tap it again, pay life and draw a card. Over to Runetail, Kastuni Ascendant's turn. Weathered Wayfarer being activated, they're going to go look for a land. We have the Parhelion 2. There was a Parhelion 1, if you read the original Ravnica bo books, it uh, crashed into Prov and exploded. That's also why there's new Prov. So the problem I have with Parhelion is it's going to dodge the uh, Dead of Winter. So, Gaze of Granite might be something we have to consider, but we are not getting enough land cards to Gaze of Granite the Parhelion. Oro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Recently banned in just about everything, too. But that's coming down for Ramos. Ramos up to 9-9, nine, nine, five counters on it. This turn, they can remove them and get a lot of mana. They remove the counters from Ramos. Uh, hopefully it's not a recurring Torment of Hailfire. It's a Psychonic Rift. Hmm. Okay, that might actually work to our advantage. Hellstorm Valkyrie gets sent back to our hand. Arcadia loses their whole field. Uh, the Ketsumi player loses all of their field, plus their uh, Parhelion 2, the Aetherflux Reservoir, all that stuff. Guild Summit. When there's a battlefield, you may tap any number of untapped gates you control. Draw a card for each of the gates tapped this way. And whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. How many gates do they have untapped? One, two? So they can still get two cards. It's not terrible.
Is that guild gate into play? Field of the Dead will trigger twice. Guild Summit will trigger. They'll draw a card. Mazes end gets bounced back to their hand. So how many gates will that make? It looks like they have three in play at the moment. That'll be a fourth one. Orzhov guild gate. Okay, so they're about halfway there. They'll also draw yet another card from the guild summit. Mazes end back into play. And more zombies. We have an attack. Looks like, yep, full on into the Katsuni player. Alright, I guess they don't like all that life gain that might be happening. To be fair, they haven't really gained all that much life, if any at all. Damage is good. They are down to 12 on the Katsuni side. Uh, lots of triggers for the Monarch, but Ramos will only get the one token. Katsuni player also up to 6 commander from Ramos itself. Uh, let's see. I don't know what to do necessarily now. The Dead of Winter or the Gaze of Grant is now pretty one-sided, so I'm not too worried about that. Eight cards in hand for Ramos. They will have to discard one at the cleanup step. Let's go ahead and see what they discard. They discard Morphic Pool. Over to Arcades' turn. Arcades is going to be hard-pressed to get back into the game just because it doesn't have haste. And it's a heavily creature deck, but we'll see what they can pull off. A Misty Rainforest came into play and is cracked for the Arcades player. Arcades the Strat just coming back down for that player. Probably going to play some more defenders, get some card draw going. Options are always good, which is why I had to go tear out some card draw. Sunscape Familiar coming back down. Doorkeeper coming down. A little bit of some mill there. Equal to defenders. Yep. So for three mana, right now they can tap to mill X cards. Target player though, so it's not everybody. Uh, and it'll be three because X is equal to the number of defenders they control. I'm sorry, it's equal to two. I just forget Katie's doesn't have defender itself. We have Suspicious Bookcase coming back down. So as far as defenders go, Doorkeeper... Like, I'm, I'm not using that one. It doesn't do enough. To our turn, we get Woodland Cemetery. Let's go ahead and play it. Now, what do we want to do here? We could cast a Gaze of Granite where it could equal five. It wouldn't kill Ramos, though, is the problem I'm having. Um, and it would kill everything that Arcades has. Likewise, we could do Dead of Winter, and it still wouldn't kill Ramos because we only have five snow permanents on the battlefield right now. So sad faces all around, I suppose. I think the sweet spot here is going to be Graves of Grant for six. And, well, for three in the X. And Arcades will lose everything except Arcades, but Ramos will lose everything except Ramos. So it kind of evens out the field a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. Gaze of Granite for three. Should take care of everything we need to take care of. Unfortunately, I don't have any more land destruction to get rid of the Maze's End. All right, and there it goes. Nothing else to summon. Let's pass it off to our opponents. To the Rune Tail's turn. Weathered Wayfarer coming back down for that player. Rune Tail, Ketsune Ascendant also coming back down. Only for three mana since it was bounced back to the hand. Unfortunately, it does not flip for them right now. Marble Diamond coming down for the Ketsune player. All right, we have Etherflux Reservoir being discarded by the Ketsune player at the end of their turn during the cleanup step. We have a Mystical Tutor out of Ramos on their turn. Oh, that should be fun. All right, let's go see what they're getting. Reshape the Earth. Uh-oh. Search your library for up to 10 land cards. Oh, so they're just going straight for the win here. That is unfortunate. At least I think that's what's happening. Uh, let's see. They do have to wait until their upkeep, yeah? No, they have to actually activate the maze's end. And then if they control 10 or more ga uh, gates. So, no, nah, it still looks like it's pretty doable. They're getting back Euro. Its escape clause is being activated. A 6-6 six, six, uh, for 4 is still pretty good. They'll come into play. Ramos will gain 3 life. Draw an extra card and play an extra land this turn if they have it. It's Bajuga Bog. I think they'll probably target us. Uh, we don't have that much recursion in the deck right now. Yep. So that's fine. Nothing we can do about it. It does keep us from using Cauldring, though, and I did want to use the Owl. So a little bit of a sadness there. They removed counters from Ramos. Lots of mana being dumped. Probably going to go into Reshape the Earth. Uh, that'll pay for all of it, except for one, yeah. And there it is on the stack. So yeah, they can win this game right now 
get the rest of the gates out of their deck, activate the maze's end, play the maze's end, and they win the game. Sad face. Many Field of the Dead triggers. From two of them, I might add. Oh, they also have a Dark Depths. Okay, then. And a Valakut. Uh, what else came into play? Boros Guildgate, Rakdos Guildgate, Gruul Guildgate. So I imagine they have all the Guildgates now. Maze's End being activated. They'll go look for a gate. Potentially they still have one in the deck. Uh, not necessarily. There is one extra gate card, or were there two? Yep, and they win the game. Just because of Maze's End, that's unfortunate. I am probably going to give the point to the Katsuni player. Just to play mono white is itself a brave thing to do in EDH, so I'm going to give it to them. Let's draw a few cards here, see what we're going to get. Ice Hide Troll, Snow Covered... Okay, so Prize of Fame maybe, but... Yeah, we just didn't have enough interaction for that land. I think I only have two land destruction things in the deck besides, you know, and their Beast Within and Ghost Quarter. <sighs> yeah. Wasn't prepared for Maze's End. Can't say that enough. Okay. Three points to the winner. Two points to the Mono White player. No points to us. Bit of a sad face, but we really didn't get to show off our deck much, unfortunately. Got a lot of kind of like the duds, I guess you could say. Let's go ahead and take a look at the deck, discuss the changes I made and was hoping for and getting to play, but uh, didn't. Okay. Here's the deck as it stands currently. Added some other cards to the deck. Added Find and Finality. Uh, I do really like this card. It's always just like on the cusp of not being good enough, but it's good enough most of the time where I like it. Uh, pick and choose. I mean, it has recursion and a board wipe on it technically, so I do like the flexibility. As for a bunch of X spells I add, Profane Command we saw, Gaze of Grant, Pull from Tomorrow. I also did Open into Wonder. It makes creatures unblockable and when they hit you draw a card. So I figure since Yorn is attacking, and we get to untap our lands. Making it unblock unblockable and drawing a card off him and plus some other stuff might be pretty good. I haven't gotten to test it that, uh, yet though. And it is sorcery. So we would have to use it first and then untap our lands with Yorn. Alter Ego also into the deck as yet another clone. Other than that, didn't make too many other changes to the deck. I think based on what we have here though, we definitely want to stick to more of like permanents that have removal tacked onto them. I know I was sitting there wishing I had an acidic slime in the deck, and I do not. Instead, I do have Krufix God of Horizons, but this might be a mistake because this, this build really isn't going for big mana, so I would definitely take this out and go get an acidic slime because, yeah, that seems to be much more useful for us, plus have, it has death touch, so I'm going to switch that out right now. On top of that, I added back in the Leyline of Anticipation and Vivian Champion of the Wilds, Gives flash to our creatures and or flash to everything via the ley line. And I think that's pretty good with Yorn, especially if we can get our X spells to not be sorcery speed. Uh, a lot of our removal is still instant though. Still have Price of Fame, still have Feed the Serpent, still have Hagra Mauling. Oops, sorry, that's the Spirit of Oligard. This is Hagra, uh, uh, Hagra Mauling, rather. So all those are instant. And then we still have Death Sprout. It's also an instant, and I like that it gets us a land. Uh, as for mass removal, I did add the, like I said, the Gaze of Grant and the Find and Finality. I didn't really go with any bounce removal. I didn't think it would be best in this deck to necessarily do that, especially if we kill our own guys. We want more time to set up instead of them just recasting their stuff, especially if we use the backside, the Rhyme Staff. So I felt that going with bounce removal, you know, except for Echoing Truth, because I love Echoing Truth, wasn't really what I was going for. So there's no evacuation, there's no... River's Rebuke, there's uh, no Flood of Tears, no Cyclonic Rift, none of that stuff. Anyway, here's the deck. Of course, the deck list, if you want to check it out in its entirety, will be listed below. I am going to list it with the Acidic Slime over Crufix, though. So just keep that in mind. I know we didn't see either in the game because the Acidic Slime was in here, and Crufix didn't come up. But because we're not really going big mana, big X spells, big abilities... Uh, I feel it'll be better if I post it with the Acidic Slime over the Crufix. Alright, that sums up Yorn. I know it's not the strongest deck, I didn't want to keep it casual. If you have a stronger build you want to employ, go for it. I like the Commander, that Saltai, that isn't like, com you know, completely good stuff slash broken, because you do need at least Snow Lance to do things. You could just make it good stuff, but in any case, I will see you for the next series for Kaldheim. 
And we got a while until we get to the next set. I think it's Time Spiral Remastered. It'll probably gonna have some older commanders in it. I'm really looking forward to kind of what they pick and maybe what they might put into the new set. I'm pretty stoked about that. But until we get there, we're on Keldheim. See you for the next series. Stay safe out there. And thank you for watching.